Greg Davis and welcome to Taskmaster. There are just two shows left now, only two opportunities for our five famous foes to accumulate enough points to become the new Taskmaster champion. Soon, one of them will be able to hold aloft my golden trophy and proudly proclaim, I have won this prize. OK, so in doing so, I have rendered myself unemployable within my chosen field. <laughs> sure, my partner has had a rethink and gone to live at their mum's for a while, but this trophy, this victory is mine. <laughs> so let's hear it for those vying for this honour for the penultimate time. Welcome, Daisy May Cooper! <laughs> Johnny Vegas! Catherine Parkinson, Mawad Rizwan, and Richard Herring. And sitting next to me like a saveloy that's been tossed around by a molting dog. He's hairy <laughs> but full of flavour. Your very own in Little Alex Hawes. <laughs> oh, no. Huh? no. I don't like that at all. No. <laughs> I'm exhausted, Greg. I know. All the training. Oh. Have I told you about what I'm training for? No, you haven't. You know I love the deep sea diving, so yep. I'm just trying to get my uh, lung capacity up, breathing underwater. Yep. Uh, 35 minutes now with my new system. You want to see it? Yes, please. <laughs> 35 minutes I can do that. So as long as I'm down there and my nose is up there, absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> you cross. No? Huh? I'm just enjoying the uh, the snickers of politeness. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's the penultimate prize task category then, Alex? It's the best bedding. Ah. Oh. Each is a sheet. You'll judge which of them has brought in the best bedding, and that person will bed five points at the end of the episode. The winner will take home lots of brill bedding and be smug as a bug in five rugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, Mawan, you got me some sweet, sweet bedding. Yeah, I've brought in. My favourite travel pillow. Oh. It looks like this. Oh. Wow. Oh, God. Dual function. Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need, I need to write down something here, Richard. What's the oh, other function? Oh, you could use it as a pillow. Yeah, and just, just for his records, the um, second function. Just, oh, you could keep um, buns hot in the that's hole. Not, oh. That's not <laughs> what he meant. Okay. That's not what you meant, is it? You've ruined my favourite travel <laughs> pillow for that's me. Awful. I think you've ruined it already. <laughs> <laughs> he's only ruined it if he's attracted to elephants. Mm. <laughs> Let's see an action. This is how you wear the ostrich pillow. Oh, oh my God! I hear what you're saying. It looks like an elephant's ass, but when you wear it, it's the most comfiest thing you'll ever wear. I think something that brings you a lot of happiness and comfort has been defiled. Because of these perverts. They're perverts. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Catherine, bedding. What have you brought in? I chose silk sheets. I've never slept on silk sheets, and I'm 43. Why have you brought them along if you don't use them? Because I thought if I offered it as a prize, I might, I might get some. The silk is obtained from the cocoons of the larvae of the mulberry silkworm Bombyx mori, reared in captivity. But it's just caterpillar poo, isn't it, silk? It, it, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I actually thought it was um, the semen. Is it caterpillar semen? It's obtained from the cocoons of the larvae. I don't think they are yet ejaculating. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far, we've had a restrictive sex aid <laughs> and something that's been woven out of caterpillar sperm. <laughs> What's next? Daisy? Clean sheets. I just want to know why that's a novelty to you. <laughs> Possibly because mine aren't very often clean. Are they not? No, I've, uh, recently I've got a really bad problem with... Oh, God. Oh. ..with drooling when I sleep. Oh, phew. <laughs> it's not the worst of my bedtime problems, but... <laughs> it's up there. But these um, are clean cotton sheets. But having it changed and having clean cotton sheets, just everything is just being able to get it into is. bed and... Mm. Isn't it great? Johnny, <laughs> what bedding have you brought us? <laughs> I'm going out on a, a limb. I've merely brought in lamb's wool. Lamb's wool? Apparently for birds and nesting. It's warm when it needs to be, it's cool when it needs to be. 
nature does best what, what we try to reproduce ourselves. That's made me really emotional. Yeah, that's really beautiful. <laughs> when I left London before the lockdown, I made sure I left lambs well out. Really? You put it in a little spiral cage and the birds will come in. In anticipation take it. of bringing it on this show? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go back and deny the birds so I can win Taskmaster. <laughs> so now loads of little chicks are really cold. Oh. It's almost as if you made it up this morning. <laughs> no. Uh, we've got one left, right? Yeah. We are going to end with Richard. I've had something specially commissioned, my fantasy bedding. Here it is. Oh, my wow. God. You can sleep on one pillow and pretend you're in bed with Greg. You can sleep on the other pillow and pretend you're in bed with Alex, or you can go in the middle. Menage à toi. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I look so surprised? It looks like Alex's wife has just walked into the room. You've clocked her at the door, and Alex is like, say something. <laughs> <laughs> say something. <laughs> right, I am going to give two points each to uh, Johnny and Catherine, because I was equally uninspired by both of them. <laughs> Silk sheets I'm, and wool. Correct, I'm okay. giving three points because she sold it so well, and I do love slipping into a lovely cold cotton sheet. I'm going to give three points to Daisy, just because he's happy with it, and I hate to see a young man brought down by horrible old perverts. <laughs> I'm giving him a one, four points. Well, I'm one. And because I think there's money in it, I'm giving five points <laughs> to Richard Herring. Well done, Richard. Well done. <laughs> hey, Alex, have you got a task ready? Yes, it's time for some low-rent architecture. Hi, Johnny. It's got a measured entrance. It was, wasn't it? Very calm. A bit dramatic, but down to number. All right. All right. I've never said all right before. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, you're good at it. Thank you. <sighs> Make. <laughs> I hate stuff like this. Make the biggest beer mat house on this table. Whilst making your biggest beer mat house, you must ring the doorbell after exactly one minute. Then after exactly 58 more seconds. Then 56 seconds and so on until zero seconds. So basically two seconds down. Biggest beer mat house wins. If you make more than two mistakes with the doorbell timing, you will be disqualified. <sighs> your time ends when you press the doorbell for the last time and starts now. OK. So I'll be one minute and then 58 seconds and 56 seconds. So I've got to keep going in and out. Oh, I understand. That's obvious. OK, okay. what's the point of that? So I keep vigilant. What's the like, point? Stay of... present. I'm not sure what the point of any of it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're uncomfortable with any kind of casual greeting, aren't you? All right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. That's my first observation. And my second is that Richard Herring says he hates things like this, as if people regularly <laughs> ask him... <laughs> Oh, to make this. a house out of beer, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so they had ever-diminishing time periods to go in and out of the room. They could see a clock. They could see the time ticking down, otherwise it would be too hard. But they had just over a quarter of an hour in total, but obviously they would have smaller and smaller gaps as they went along. And to introduce the first people, I'm going to use the male equivalents of their female names. It's Keith and Desmond. <laughs> <laughs> so it's up to you how you make a beer, Matt House. Do I have any sellotape? If you want it. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, let's get... Come on, let's get this sellotape in, please. How long do you think it takes to get to the front door? Okay. Perfect timing. We're starting again with 58. You don't really get any prizes for building a cool house. It's more about the doorbell, isn't it? Well, it's more about the size of the house. Mm. This, is, this is good. Mm, no. Would you mind going and ringing the doorbell? Um, yeah, ideally at 58, yeah. Oh, fuck it. Look, this is good. Did I miss it? this time. Yeah, that felt like a bit of a mistake. I'm sort of, sort of, sort of busy thinking about um, the house. Yes. Ah, pile them like this! Of course. What do you normally build a house with? Books. And? Straw. <laughs> That's the race. <laughs>
I just feel like all I've done is ring the doorbell. Forty eight, please. Yeah, a bit late this time, Catherine. No. Oh. Fuck. No. I just don't think this looks like a house. You better go and ring the doorbell. Just ringing the doorbell. I'm just ringing the doorbell. <sighs> Are you, are you stopping? Yeah. Oh, my God, there's so you many... You need to go and ring the doorbell, Catherine. You know. Catherine, you need, to, Catherine, you need to go and ring the doorbell. Can I have a cup of tea? Yes. Hang on, hang on. Ah. Time to go and ring the doorbell, Catherine. See, I'm getting quicker. Well, the time's getting shorter, isn't it? Yeah, off you go, Catherine. I might just build menagerie around the house. He lives here. This is mate Gareth. There really won't be a lot of time now between each one. Now? Yes, off you go. <laughs> ah! Fuck, fuck, fuck! Sorry. Go through, go through. Nice. We need to go and ring the doorbell now, Catherine. I stay here. One, two, go. Just two seconds. Well, Catherine. what's the point? What's the point? Catherine. <laughs> Sorry, that was childish. But what's the point? I haven't made a house. <laughs> I, I felt genuinely quite low. Well, it's the angriest I've ever seen you. You took a house and you made it not look like a house. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so rapid. I will be amazed if anyone's managed to do this. Well, I managed this. to build a house. She did. This is her finished product. There's a house. So oh, there I is a roof. Wait there. to move in. <laughs> <laughs> I've rendered it yeah, as... It's, it's Georgian, isn't it? Well, I've, <laughs> I've, re I've rendered it as an architect would. So if that was a house, it would look like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah, that's exactly what it would look like. Well, if that's a lovely house, what I was left with would constitute some kind of building. The trouble is you also disqualified many times over for not ringing the doorbell in, in time. Whereas <laughs> Daisy stopped running at the 42-second mark she just gave up. And the worst of what really sticks in my craw is I'm going to have to give her points for basically just throwing some beer mats in a big pile. Yeah. But there is a gap in the middle. There's a gap in the middle. So they're, they're sort of foundations. OK, what's the gap in the middle? For a living space. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking, <laughs> eating, sleeping, entertaining. Yeah, Absolutely fine. I bought us a house. Oh, God, I, I would rather have you told me about it. <laughs> no, 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 you're going to love it. <laughs> it's got a big hole in the middle for us to uh, <laughs> sleep and eat in. <laughs> and uh, raise our children. <laughs> Do you want to see some more houses? Yeah, sure. This time we've got <laughs> Margaret and Rita. Here we go. I don't understand how you do it. Probably takes you five seconds to reach the front door, by the way. Just... It's a stress, man. Oh, you need to go and ring the doorbell. No! I don't mind bothering ringing the doorbell. <laughs> OK, do you know what? Two, one. What have you got there? Got the doorbell. Now then. Yeah, great. Jammy. You're a lot more relaxed now. Yeah, I think it's because I've got the, the doorbell here. It's really alleviated a lot of stress. Ah! I've cut my hands. There's blood on the doorbell. I've cut my, oh, <laughs> cut my hands. Stop putting blood on the doorbell, Richard. <laughs> I'm starting to see a doorway. Let's try for a second story. Need a lot more room. Oh shit, I've got back the doorbell. I don't know this door. <laughs> Do you have anything that turns? Something that turns? I've got this. Double sided tape. Oh. Thank you, Richard. There's the house. I mean, blood and sweat and tears have gone into this. Don't mean to brag, but it's a work of art. <laughs> there was a boxing match um, years ago when Chris Eubank was at the height of his powers. 
and he had a lot of battles with Nigel Benn. And in their most brutal fight, Eubank won it on points. And they went over to him and they said, Chris, you must be elated after such a monumental battle. And Chris Eubank said something, and it's all I now remember about the fight. He said, he split my tongue, <laughs> get an ambulance. <laughs> And all I remember <laughs> of Richard's attempt is, I've got the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what his house looks like. <laughs> this is what he ended up with. He sort of piled the beer mats around the little model of a house. Yeah. It's rubbish. I mean, this is what it would look like if it was an actual house, obviously. Really? No, it wasn't. The, who rented these? I rented these. <laughs> you don't like them? Well, no, that's a really nice house. Go back to Richard's house. Here's right. Richard's house. What it's like. Right. <laughs> what, you want to pay? There's a door there to go in. Yes. It's absolute madness. Mawan, on the mm. other hand, this could be your finest hour, I think. Mm. The bell alone. I watch four people in here go... <laughs> <laughs> this is the lighthouse that he constructed. Here it is. Look at that. Amazing. I said, oh, wow, it's a windmill. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the end of part one. Already we have windmilled through that part <laughs> like a couple of flying ninjas. <laughs> See you in a few minutes. <laughs>... The Taskmaster. What was going on before the break, Alex? Before the break, the contenders were trying to build beer mat houses under an ever-decreasing time limit. There's only one person left. He's the perennial voice of hope. He is Johnny Vegas. Oh, this is rubbish. Why well, don't even bother? I shut the door. I've lost many a bar job. Just standing there licking beer mats. I once repaired a bicycle puncher with my spittle. It's amazingly strong. Sorry, chicken. Turn some out. highly controversial and put in a supporting wall there. Oh, it's your fault! Go on, that man. I'm gonna miss it. What's this one? Never learnt to read, but look at that. On the prairie, okay? Because otherwise, what's the point? It's just a homestead! <laughs> that was the task that I was most invested in. I thought it was my time to shine, and that broke my heart. But your skill is clear. That was... We yeah. saw the house. And you even put in a supporting wall. There was actual construction talk <laughs> mentioned in there. I mean, sure, <laughs> architecture's changed these days. These days, people just make a hole in it a was... load of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful, John. He called it Vegas Villas. Vegas Villas. When it was at its peak. Well, was... every one of them was an apartment. <laughs> Heartbreaking. Yeah, sadly, you've got to score this. Do these two get any points, Johnny and Catherine? Well, I mean, God forgive me, but no. Oh, please, for effort. I, I didn't... Can't, I, I, I can't give effort points. I think That's he not... should get more than me. It was really it's hard. Really, really, really making making, really making hard. his own cement. Just give me one point for emotionally investing myself in the tap. <laughs> Let me think about that. <laughs> OK. I'm giving Mawan five points. Five points. I mean, my God, they don't deserve it. <laughs> Four points to Daisy, three points to Richard. And then we've got zero for Catherine, and then there's just the... Uh... And then it's just a matter of the bonus point for Johnny. Please. No, 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 no points. Zero to Johnny. Well done. Seriously. I can't see people see me being publicly weak. <laughs> <laughs> I have a 17-year-old, and he's never going to speak to me after this. So be it. <laughs> <laughs> Scoreboard. <laughs> Scoreboard, yes. Mawan's in the lead with nine points. 
Well, we've got that. <laughs> Next up, it's a fancy one, Greg. Unless it involves lots of tasks and I get to press some buttons. Here we go. Hello, Daisy. Greetings. Oh, some fruit. That's nice. Chocolate orange, I spy. Where's the task? Colder. Warmer. Warm, warmer. Warmer. Hot, hot, colder, colder. Oh, now then. No. Careful. Yes. Ah. Oh. So this has just slipped down. OK, complete the most tasks. There is one task behind each door. You may choose the order to open the doors. You may only move when the doors are moving. And you must stay this side of the line. Yeah, where you are now, that line that goes all the way across. During the task, you must tell Alex which door to open within one minute of the previous door closing. You must tell Alex which door to open first within one minute from now. Does that all make sense? Yes. And is the chocolate orange part of a task? I yeah. don't. I genuinely don't know. Okay. Great. So, which door would you like me to open first, Richard? Two. Five. Three. Uh, I'll go for door number two. One. One? No. Three. Have you thought about four? Let's do four first, yeah. <laughs> I'm very suggestible. <laughs> I've got a theory that um, if you put a chocolate orange in any situation in life, that'll be the focus of anyone's attention. <laughs> OK, let's crack on. Here we go, then. Hello, Matron. We're going to start with Dick and Johnny. Good luck, Richard. Thank you. Kick, Kick three, three orange things through, through this door. door. I didn't know I could scream in that octave. Have you kicked anything before? I got the, the last one was... Hmm. Door number four, please, Alex. Right, you have to stay there. Uh, three. Here we go. Empty the bucket and put both your shoes in it. Eat a whole banana. You can move now if you want. Oh, can I? <laughs> no, you can't. I think I've done that one. Congratulations, Richard. <laughs> what door do you want next, Johnny? Mm-hmm. Say again. Number three. Number... Three. Number three. Go ahead, man. Let's go for one. Right. Empty the bucket and put both your shoes in here. Come on, Mum, I'm weary. Throw ten yellow things through this door. Oh, no. I think I took them off, did I? Good That's too far away. You were too far away, yes. As soon as I'm closer to five and I've got my feet in the bucket. We'd better go to four. Don't put your feet in the bucket. Eat a whole banana. Sit on the bucket and completely peel an orange and a banana. <laughs> now, two's number five. Spring out the bucket, bucket man! Sit on the bucket and completely peel an orange and a banana. Don't send your things through this door. Oh, God! Oh. <laughs> These are my observations. You want to hear them? Yes, please. 
Neither of these men can kick anything in a direction of their choice. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Under pressure, Richard Herring will not, despite points being at stake, rush eating a banana. <laughs> he enjoys a banana like a monkey. <laughs> And finally, the sequel to Jerry Maguire will fail to capture the hearts of the public. <laughs> <laughs> got all that. Those are my observations. Well, they had five tasks to do. I, I've got it down that Richard did two and a half of them, while Johnny did 2.3 of them. It's difficult for me to say how impressive that was out of the context of the rest of the group, so I think we should just crack on and see some more. OK, well, let's see two people wearing all-in-ones. All-in-one, Catherine and Mawan. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a whole banana. Empty the bucket and put both your shoes in it. Stop. Go! Oh. oh, God. <laughs> oh, no, my God! <laughs> oh, go. I'm going to shake. Stop. No. Which door would you like me to open next, my one? That's a chocolate orange. OK. <laughs> Number three. Four, please. Enter the bucket and put both your shoes in it. Eat a whole banana. <laughs> Easy shoes. Come on, which door would you like me to open now? Mm -hmm. Number one, <laughs> Say again. <laughs> Number one, bro. Pick three oranges through this door. Throw ten yellow things through this door. Ah! Sorry! 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 I need three more things. It's not even yellow. Which door would you like me to open next, Moan? Two, please. One, please. Because it's closer? Yeah. Pick three orange things through this door. Throw ten yellow things through this door. You're a long way from the door. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> oh, I don't like this game. <laughs> One door left. Door number five, please. It's the final door. Door number five. On the bucket and completely peel an orange and a banana. And completely peel an orange and a banana. Okay. Shit! I've got rid of all the oranges. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> The most fascinating thing for the whole attempt to me was that once Mawan had filled his mouth full of banana, his voice sounded like it had been digitally slowed down. <laughs> I was trying to curl my lips around it on this. Uh, so it's almost lovely now. <laughs> I mean, in total, they were both worse than Johnny and Richard. They both overstepped the line when they weren't supposed to. Cleverly, Catherine, when she had to peel an orange, she peeled the chocolate orange, which is the quickest type of orange to peel, but then she failed with the banana and cheated at the very end by doing it after the whistle. Yeah, what a shame. Right, time for another break. Don't think about the insane calorific value of the biscuits you're about to bring in from the kitchen. The rush they give you will override the long-term health implications. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to Taskmaster with me, the Taskmaster. And me, Alex, son of Sheila and Hugh. I like gentle <laughs> films, gentle music, and to be held by big, strong arms. Before the break, we witnessed the contestants completing a series of tasks, each unknown until a roller door revealed them. Just one person left. It's Daisy May Cooper. Run, DMC. <laughs> I'm going to start with door number five. Okay. Sit the bucket and completely peel an orange and banana. Now. Okay. Which door next? Four. <laughs> Banana. 
Okay, which door next? <laughs> oh, are you going to finish that? <laughs> which door next, Daisy? Three, please. <laughs> Empty the bucket and put both your shoes in it. You just filled it up. Yeah. Success. Where, where would you like to go next? Door number two. Let's see what you've done there. How many orange things have you got in your bucket? Three. Next. Number one, please. Throw ten yellow things through this door. One, two. Stop, stop, Wait. stop. You've got to do seven in the next ten seconds. Yeah, very good. Some definite technique there. Well, she was the only one who went down the doors in order, so she had a shorter distance each time. She also had the bucket with her at all times because she thought, presumably, this would be useful. And nice to have it confirmed that she eats like a psychotic tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly thought it was like a Scooby-Doo tribute. <laughs> <laughs> And the food just disappears yeah, into the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> she did do quite well, didn't she? She did the most in total. She got pretty much three out of five. Lovely work. <laughs> so Daisy, five points. Richard, four. Johnny, three. Moan, two. And Catherine, one point. There it is. Well done, Daisy. May Cooper. <laughs> Next, please. Now, this one was the very first task all of them attempted on their very first day. And I thought, to break the ice, it'd be very nice to greet them with an air horn. <laughs> Fucking hell, OK. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Richard. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Sorry, Johnny. Hello. How are you? Nervous, yeah. Are you? Yeah. I love a wax seal. Oh, my God. OK. Work out how many balls are in the basket. Every ball must be in the basket when you make your guess. Closest to the correct answer wins. You have four minutes. Your time starts now. <laughs> First ever task they all completed. Well, I wonder why they were so nervous at old Air Horn Andy over there. <laughs> Gave him a little scare, didn't you? Air Horn Andy. Yeah, Air Horn Andy. <laughs> Alex begins with an A anyway. You could have put him Air Horn Alex. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how little regard I have for him. I haven't even registered his real name. <laughs> little Air Horn Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we see Catherine, Daisy and Moan? Yes. <laughs> Here they are. I tell you what, I'm going to count the top layer, I think, into some kind of thing. Go for it. And then make a, make a guess. OK. So I'm going to... Yeah, we'll wait OK, here. yeah. Because you've given me four minutes, I feel like I've got to do some kind of mathematical thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I don't know. Uh, OK, I'm going to just count one row and then times it by something. So this is, like, the top level. I think it's about 500. What do you think? 500 balls. And then we've got some, like, heapedness at the top. So let's say that's... <sighs> I probably could have had time to count them. You've still got two minutes for 40 seconds. OK, so... Oh, I'm going to have to put those back in it. Yes. Right, sit. So... Oh, fucking hell. What are you doing at the moment, Catherine? Do you think 500 is a good guess? Do you think exactly 500? No, I'll, I'll take a couple off. So I'm going to say 121 plus some uh, heapage contingency. I could have taken all out and counted them, but now that it's one minute left... 
five, five, five. All the balls have to be in the basket when you make oh, a kiss. Oh, shit. Oh, there's all these little ones in here. I see. It's a good job I've gone in there. Yeah, it's definitely 100 and 142. Oh, fuck. Fuck. No, there's a lot more than that. OK, I'm going to say 150. <laughs> What's your guess? Five, five, five. Thank you, Daisy. OK, I'm going to do 162. Thank you very much. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, if I get them all back in and then give you my answer? <sighs> this was a mistake. Could you give me a hand with these? So this isn't part of the um, time thing? You sure? That's what it said. Right. 498. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. <gasps> oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh. Such a specific number after employing a system that wasn't a system at all. <laughs> what I don't understand watching it back is why I didn't guess a higher number than I did at the start. I said 500 at the start. And you discovered, discovered some small balls. Discovered the small balls and then took two off. Lowered your estimate. And you did have to make your guess within the four minutes and you guessed about ten minutes later once we'd both put them all back in <laughs> and you still haven't put them all back in. And what Alex will have been doing throughout that whole thing is thinking, I've put little balls inside. <laughs> 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 they think all the balls are uniform because I've hidden the little ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daisy, why must you persist in trying to transport things in baking trays? <laughs> <laughs> I think what happened was I was given a tour of the house at the beginning and I was shown a cupboard that had a lot of baking trays. <laughs> yeah, she did fall for our baking tray cupboard trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Mawan. First of all, congratulations for inventing two new words, heapedness, and, of course, the well-known phrase, heapage contingency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you add a little bit to your calculations... Yeah. Mm. ..for ball leeway. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite moment was when you decided there were 142 balls, but then he realised... Must and be he went, oh, ..no, wait a minute, there can't be 142, and, to quote you, there must be loads more. <laughs> Beat. <laughs> 150. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then I added the heapage contingency. Very good. We're at the three-quarter mark of the show. One part left, and then someone wins some bedding to incinerate. <laughs> Hello! Welcome back. Where were we, Alex? Well, they were trying to count balls in a basket, Greg, but we'd hidden different sized balls in the basket under the other balls. We're so fiendish sometimes. <laughs> Finally, it's Johnny and it's Richard. 350 plus... Oh, I've lost myself. 356, 392. And then it's those ones on top. Oh, God. I should have just taken them all out and put them all back in again. Too late now. Oh, what's that? Oh, there's a giant one in the middle. Oh, God, this just turned into a cleaning job. Oh, oh get lost. <laughs> 395. That's good. Like everything in my life. Two nickel, two layers. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. How many balls do you think were in the basket? Um, eleven hundred. Okay. That was me thinking I was a problem solver. <laughs> <laughs> the most animated Richard got was when he said. Oh, I should have taken them all out and counted them. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> By stark contrast, Johnny said, Oh, God, like everything in my life, too little, too late. <laughs> so was he disqualified? Yeah, all the balls had to I'm be I'm disqualified, but I was the only one that found the ball bearings. You found yeah, the ball bearings? He didn't even count them. Yeah, and ignored them. <laughs> he described all the balls on the floor as a map of his pathetic DNA. <laughs> So we've got Moan with 162. 
Yeah. Richard 395, Daisy 555 with 498 over here, and 1100 from Johnny. I've got a little video to show you the actual number. <laughs> yes, please. Here it is. One thousand one hundred and ninety-two. Oh. <laughs> oh my God! I will not beg, but come on! Oh, what's the chances of me getting that close? Yeah, I'm so close. The scoring must be based on the brutal facts of what happened. Well, in that case, it's zero points to these two, Johnny and Catherine. Right, so. Moan gets three for his <laughs> way amazing. off one hundred and sixty-two. <laughs> That's amazing. Richard four for his three nine five, and Daisy, even though she was only halfway there, gets. Five points for a 5-5-5. Five, five, five. Wow. Let's have a quick look at the scores. OK, well, in terms of the series, it couldn't be closer at the top because two people have the same number. Daisy and Richard are both on 140 points. <gasps> and this episode, Greg, with 17 points, Daisy's in the lead. <laughs> wow. All right, then, everyone, please make your way to the stage for the final task of the show. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Greg. Who uh, is going to read the task for us? Johnny Vegas. Lovely. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Draw this monster that Taskmaster is going to describe. Most accurate drawing wins. You have two minutes from when the Taskmaster starts talking. Yeah, so let's draw the monster that the Taskmaster is going to describe. He's only going to say it once. I think that's very important you all take that on board. Good luck. The angry monster has three arms, two of which are lumpy. She has two eyes and two more eyes and one leg and two more eyes and a huge tusk that looks like a tree. What's a tusk? Fuck off, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. It's a competition. Just and I'm one. losing. She is urinating and waving and holding a cake. And, and she is stripy it. all over Ugh. and is very, very cold. And she has three more legs. <laughs> and she's doing a star jump. And she's got a pet dog who is small and furry and red and black and has one leg missing. Ten seconds left. Very different tactics up here, Greg. Someone didn't rush into it. Oh, that's because it's not a banana. <laughs> Three seconds. Put down your pen, please. <laughs> Whose picture would you like to have a little look at, Greg? I'd like to see Daisy May Cooper's, please. <sighs> Daisy May Cooper didn't draw anything until the last 30 seconds. She made a list of what you were saying. Oh. Wow. Well, I thought about doing that. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the tusk does look like a tree. <laughs> Definitely a urinating. Six eyes. Isn't that very angry? Yeah, she is, because she's doing this. <laughs> very good. Next up, Johnny Vegas. I'm going to go in order. It's a good dog. Is she urinating, Johnny? You didn't give me yellow. <laughs> and I don't think that was fur. <laughs> Catherine. So, six eyes. Yep. <laughs> Plus an extra one. Uh, a task that looks like a tree. The dog isn't red and black, but it is red. That's a jet of, the jet of urine. Purple urine, yeah? I mean, to be fair, it is a monster. It may well have uh, purple urine. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, wow. wow. I'll be honest, she looks a bit more Canadian than I wanted her to. She is one maple lady. Where's the tusk? We, oui. the tusk is here. It's a tusk. Does it look like right. a tree? Um, I will... Uh, oh, lump, lumpy arms. Lumpy arms. I did lumpy arms. I Catherine can't find Catherine did lumpy it. arms. She can't find no, them lumpy now. lumpy eyes, wasn't it? No, lumpy, lumpy arms. arms. <laughs> and I didn't ask for lumpy eyes. We'll have to take those off. <laughs> um, Richard Herring. I was writing down as well. Uh, that's the tr tusk, six eyes, birthday cake. Uh, that's a vagina and that's we coming out of it. Oh. That's one, two, three, four legs and that's a star jump motion. Oh, and you've signed it. Signed, Richard. So there's Richard <laughs> with a free vagina for you, Greg. Thank you. I'll come and check off my list of criteria. We'll add those to the final scores. Come and join me down here. <laughs> Welcome back. All right, Buttercup. What did that do? I saw five great monsters. Yeah. 
They were sweet, sweet monsters. They were urinating. So <laughs> there were 19 categories that they had to fulfil. Yes. Catherine and Daisy both got 10 of those categories. Lovely. Is that it? Disappointed. I'm surprised. Yours wasn't angry. It didn't have three arms. The arms weren't lumpy. It didn't have six eyes. It didn't have four legs. It was legs. angry because it was red. It was red because it was red. <laughs> Moan and Johnny both got 11 of the categories. Wow. Oh. So they're either first or second. Did Richard get more than 11 or less than 10? I think he got more than 11. He did get more. He got 14 <gasps> of the 19. Oh. Five points. How many points do you want to give to Moan and Johnny in second place? Four. OK, and then Catherine and Daisy? Three. Tick, tick. And that means he's not only the series leader by two points from Daisy, he's won this episode! Oh, Richard wins. what? Richard wins! Please go and bag your bedding! So, what have we learned today? We've learned that to every person, home has a different meaning. To a lighthouse keeper and Moan, home is a tall cylindrical building that warns ships at sea of imminent danger during a storm. To Daisy May Cooper, it's any old pile of rubbish with a hole in the middle <laughs> where she lives. <laughs> Time to get ready for the grand final, but now let's allow tonight's winner their moment once more. It's Richard Herring! <laughs> For more Taskmaster, subscribe now!